Hi everyone, my name is Kimberly Matson, and I'm the Director of Programs at Clean Valley Council. And I'm so happy to be here with you guys today in this virtual STEAM Day event. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about sustainability. What is it? And what are some of the choices that you can make every day to make a sustainable world? So uh, I'm gonna have some items to show you and I'm going to um, have some slides for you as well. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, I want to talk to you a little bit about Clean Valley Council. Who are we and what do we do? And um, we are a nonprofit organization here in the Roanoke Valley. And our purpose is to help people make good choices uh, and be responsible when, um, to have responsible use for our natural environment. We do that by teaching people how to make good choices. And also uh, we teach how to uh, conservation through education. And so here uh, are some of the things that we like to teach about, you know, how, what to do with our, with our trash and how to reduce, reuse, recycle. And I'm gonna introduce a fourth R uh, to you in, in a little bit. So, we go to schools, we also talk to community groups, and we help, we teach about science, we teach about sustainability, and also this idea of environmental stewardship. So using science and understanding what sustainability is, uh, which I will talk about in, in a couple minutes, you get to go out and make good choices by helping to clean up rivers, learning the species that live in our area. And if you look at the map down here, in the corner, you can even help with some science and collecting science and showing the stream quality of our local rivers and streams. One other thing that we do is we help give people supplies so that uh, people can clean up the, the areas around their, their houses or in the communities and, and make the Roanoke Valley a really more beautiful place than it already is. So, um, part of making the Roanoke Valley beautiful is understanding what sustainability is. And so when I talk about sustainability, it's a really um, complicated term. But when we talk about the choices that we can make in our daily lives, it, it's not so complicated anymore. Um, so when I, when I use the word being a sustainability or the term being sustainable, I'm talking about people, the environment, and the place we live. And science calls that systems, but really it's the place we live and how we interact with the place we live. Um, you guys all uh, go to school, uh, I go to work, I also teach in schools. And so how will we get there? Uh, what kind of electricity the schools use or our buildings use? And then also how we use the world around us, how we interact with the natural world around us. It's all connected. All of that's connected. And so uh, that connection and is, and whether that connection is a good connection or not so good connection is how we know whether we're being sustainable or not. And so in effect, it's thinking about the choices that we make today and how they might impact us tomorrow. And so there's some things that you guys have, I'm sure, seen in the media, in the media on, um, on social uh, media and such that, that relate to this. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So hopefully that gives you a good frame of reference here. And so what does it mean to be sustainable? Well, um, we kind of think of uh, renewable resources versus non-renewable resources. And one of the big popular renewable resources today is wind power. Uh, so these are wind turbines here and uh, they're really uh, good at generating electricity and then that electricity can go to houses and businesses and, they're, uh, we're, and so they're becoming more popular. Uh, the other thing that uh, to, to be sustainable, of course, is recycling, uh, reducing, reusing products. And that helps us be more sustainable in our everyday lives and the things that we, that we hold, that we find important. Um, another thing that you can do is, uh, especially with Halloween coming up, is reuse. You can find a, a way to reuse some stuff around your house and make a Halloween costume. Or uh, so that's also repurposing some, some items uh, like you see here. 
And finally, I'm going to introduce another R. So we don't just have three R's anymore. We have four R's. That's recycle, re, um, reduce, reuse. And the last one now is refuse. And so I'll let me find my, my bag here. But often we use refuse, like refuse a, a plastic bag when you're at the grocery store. The other day I went to the grocery store and I just got two items and I could carry them out by myself. So I said, no, thank you, because you know what I did? I forgot my reusable bag. And so um, because I was so forgetful, I ended up refusing a plastic bag just so I, because I didn't have that much stuff. All right, so we know what, what sustainability is and all the factors that um, make us, that make sustainability. So remember we have people, that's us, where we live and how we live. And so all those things help determine whether we're being sustainable or not. And so here we are, we have, um, I have another example here. I just showed you my plastic bag and, and my reusable shopping bag. And so let's look at the environmental impact of those. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to introduce here is a paper uh, shopping bag. And so um, let's talk about how the resources that it takes to make these products. It takes a lot more resources, honestly, to make my reusable bag. There are a lot of parts to it. It's, it's cotton, um, it's thick, it has a zipper, and it has these awesome handles as well, as opposed to this plastic bag that's just made out of um, plastic and it's kind of thin. And the paper bag also has, it's made out of paper. It's probably made out of new, uh, new trees. I don't think this is from recycled uh, paper. And so of course it's gonna take some resources. And that's what this slide shows. This slide shows the amount of water it takes to make plastic bags versus paper bags. And it actually takes more water to make a, a paper bag, believe it or not. And it takes even more water, even though I'm not showing it here, to make a reusable shopping bag. So what's more sustainable? How do we know what to choose? Well, let's talk about what happens after we use a bag at the store, okay? And so I have here a bunch of examples and let's go for my wonderful um, cloth bag. Well, using that cloth bag, and the reason why I said no thank you to this bag um, or to one like that, is because if I keep reusing my cloth bag over and over and over again, I'm likely to save over 22,000 plastic bags from getting into the environment or being made in, in general. So if everyone were to do that, can you imagine how sustainable that would be? That would be pretty darn sustainable. Uh, and because oftentimes what happens, if you look at this picture here with the plastic bags in the bushes, well, oftentimes plastic bags end up outside in the environment. We find them in our rivers and our streams and sometimes in the ocean. And the problem with these bags, even though they don't take as much water to make, they don't, they're not decomposable. They're, 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 we, we can't, they, they don't go back into the environment. In fact, even my, even my cloth bag here, um, it would decompose because it's made out of mostly cotton and such. And so those are natural fibers. They're likely to, to, um, to break apart if, they, if this was supposed, was going to get into the environment. The other thing that um, we think about with paper bags is oftentimes we can reuse them. So not only will they decompose, it takes just a few months for paper bags like, like this one to decompose, but we can use them. So here I have some examples of using them in gardening. Um, you can also, I know when I was growing up, we used to make, um, we used to have to have book covers on our textbooks. You guys don't need to do that much anymore or wrapping paper. And then lastly, because it's Halloween, you could even make um, a Halloween mask um, out of uh, paper bags. I don't suggest doing that with the plastic bags, that's for sure. And so we're talking about those four R's now. Uh, you can reuse and you can recycle or you can um, even reduce your input by using uh, canvas bags. So let's talk more about resources and using resources because it's all part of being sustainable. Uh, how much water does it take to make some very common items? Uh, cotton t-shirt, I'm wearing a cotton t-shirt. Uh, a um, ream of copy paper, you know, there's packs of copy paper, pair of jeans. Uh, I have my pair of jeans right here. 
and uh, mobile phone, there's my phone. So if you see, it takes a whole lot more water, gallons of water, almost 3,200 gallons of water to make a smartphone. But look at that, it takes over 2,100 gallons, 2,108 gallons to make a pair of jeans. And so how sustainable is this? Well, let's talk about sustainability. There are different ways of being sustainable. Like I said before, it's not just how we make something, it's what we do after it's made, after we buy it and how, and how long we keep it. So let's, let's, let's use our clothes as an example. If you put a t-shirt on and a pair of jeans and go to school, um, how much water are you carrying around with you? Well, I'm not just talking about your reusable water bottle, I am talking about the amount of water it takes to make your clothes. So if you have on your t-shirt and your jeans, one pair of um, one outfit is about 1,500, 1,500 gallons of water to make just one pair of jeans and one t-shirt. That's a lot of water. You'd be drinking water for 13 years if you were to, to, um, to drink the same amount of water it takes to make your clothes. So what do we do? Well, you want to, have, you want to wear clothes, right? So what you're gonna do then um, to be more sustainable is you might want to recycle your shirt or your jeans. You might want to wear it for a really long time, wear them until they wear out and you can't wear them anymore. The longer you keep your clothes, the better it is or the more sustainable it is for the world around us, for the, for the earth. And so here's an example that by right, right, recycling one shirt, you save, um, you save that 20, 20, 2,180 gallons of water. You have seven kilos or that's um, the equivalent to about three and a half um, pounds of carbon dioxide. And then you also use a lot less pesticides. What on earth am I talking about with pesticides with t-shirts? They're made out of cotton and cotton growers put pesticides and have to use a lot of water to grow the cotton to make that t-shirt. And so that's why we're saving uh, so many natural resources when we use our clothes and wear them for a lot longer. What else can we do to be sustainable? Well, we can take these jeans and we can recycle them. There's um, clothing stores at the mall uh, that will actually take your old clothes and they will recycle them for you. Or you can even reuse them. If you're crafty, you can make things out of your old clothes and reuse the clothes in a, a different way and repurpose them. And so there are lots of different ways to be sustainable once you buy products and you want to uh, keep them. Uh, let's talk about cell phones because we all have cell phones. We all like our cell phones but they require a lot of elements. So elements are the things you see on the periodic tables and such. This is a list of all the elements in a cell phone. It's a lot. And guess what? Those elements come from all around the world. So there are a lot of resources to make one cell phone. And that's, that's um, okay. Um, how sustainable is it? Well, let's talk about the sustainability of this. We know that all these different elements have to travel around the world to get to the, the manufacturing facilities where the cell phones are made, right? And so if you look here, there are lots of elements that are, um, that are gotten from the areas that are darker brown and fewer elements that are gotten from the areas of lighter brown. And the white areas don't actually, those areas of the world don't have uh, the elements used to make these cell phones. So here's what those elements look like in their natural form. And these are, and they point to all the different parts of the cell phone that um, require those elements. And so what do we do? We all want to have our cell phones. We all want to be modern, right? Well, uh, how can we make having a cell phone more sustainable? Well, the, the main and very simple thing to do is recycle your cell phone. We have our recycle centers around. And if um, just 515 cell phones were recycled, it would save enough energy to power your house for an entire year, just recycling your cell phones. But if the, all those phones that are actually just thrown out were recycled, uh, so you would be able to power enough energy um, to power 272,000 homes 
that's a lot of houses. That's more than the number of houses that are in uh, Roanoke City. So we would be able to power the entire city and parts of uh, the county um, if all of the cell phones that we used uh, and threw out into the trash were actually recycled. So that's a lot of resources being used to make cell phones and um, not necessarily making good choices after we want to buy a new cell phone. So let's talk about making cell phones more sustainable. Well, first of all, we can trade our cell phones in and, and recycle them. Uh, the other thing we can do is um, we can reuse them for other purposes. Or the other thing that we can do is um, we can buy used cell phones so that uh, those resources have already been used uh, to make the cell phone and we're, we're using, we're gonna be buying a refurbished cell phone uh, that is just as good as the new one. Uh, it just may not be in the package. Uh, the other thing that's, that's happening, uh, cell phone companies themselves are understanding that uh, they need to be more sustainable in how they make cell phones. So cell phone companies are now taking your old cell phones and by recycling them, having recycle programs, and they're trying to figure out how to reuse the parts in, in existing cell phones, but also how to, to make a new generation of cell phones that might be greener, might be more sustainably made. So it's kind of exciting. It's kind of cool to see what's going to happen. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how you can make a difference in the world. Remember, to be sustainable, we have to make good choices in our own lives every day. And so here are some of the things that you can do in your own lives to help make the world a more sustainable place and make your life more sustainable. First of all, um, you can help uh, garden, whether it's a community garden or a garden in your own house or at a relative's house, uh, you can you can help make that more sustainable. Uh, second of all is recycle. Know what to recycle in your community and how to recycle it. And if you can't recycle, then you might want to make sure that you can, um, you can reuse it somehow, such as making, uh, making crafts or even bird feeders and be able to at least repurpose and reuse the product for a longer length of time than it would normally have. And the other thing you can do is uh, you can refuse. And so remember we have reduce, reuse, recycle, and refuse. And so you can say, no, I don't need that. I've already got plenty of clothes. I don't need to buy new clothes. Or you can um, recycle your number ones and number two plastics and your paperboard and your metals and glass. You can reuse things just like I just showed you. And that all that helps reduce the impact you have on, on our natural resource, which makes you more sustainable. And so um, and when we reduce, reuse, recycle, and refuse, we definitely have a happier earth. So thank you very much for your time. I hope this inspires you to go make some cool, awesome Halloween costumes and, and uh, maybe uh, reuse some of uh, your recyclables to, to make some cool projects. You can make gifts out of them uh, for the upcoming holidays. The other things you can do is um, help start a litter cleanup event in your, in your area, in your, um, in your community possibly come to a rain barrel workshops. So you can get that rainwater and, and reuse it in those gardens and the compost. And then also possibly become a citizen science and help us figure out how healthy our streams really are. So with that, I hope you have a wonderful day and you can always uh, contact cleanvalley.org uh, for more information about everything we do and how we can help you. Thank you very much.